welcome to the channel of Ecoholics. So in today's video, I'm going to discuss one very important discrete distribution, which is known as negative binomial distribution. Since binomial distribution is one very important distribution and thereafter comes the negative binomial distribution. So whenever we are doing the questions of probability, we sometimes when we are doing the question, we sometimes feel that this question is similar to binomial, but it is still not what binomial tells us or the answer we are not getting by using the formulas of binomial. Because the problem is that when we are having a look at those questions, they might be from negative binomial. It's very similar to binomial, but a little different from it. So in today's video, you're going to learn how it is different from binomial and how we can use this to solve different questions of probability. So let's get into the video. All right. So first we will learn that what is actually negative binomial distribution. So in the binomial, we talk about different kind of experiments so that we can call the experiment as following the binomial distribution. Similarly, in negative binomial also, I want my experiment to follow certain conditions so that I can call my random variable of that experiment as negative binomial random variable. So what are those conditions? We are going to have a look at them. The first is the experiment consists of a sequence of independent trials. Very important condition. So when you are doing that experiment, the experiment is something which consists of a number of trials. So suppose I want to toss a coin five times. That is my whole experiment. But whenever I'm tossing a coin one time, it's first trial. Whenever I toss it for the another time, it's second trial. So I'm doing the same thing five times. So all those five different things are trials. But when I combine them, that is my single experiment I have. So, so trial is the sub part of my experiment. So each trial will result in either a success or a failure. Just like in binomial, we want either success or fail failure, nothing in between. The same way I want to either have a success or a failure. After that, the probability of success is constant from trial to trial. So if the probability of success is changing every time, you cannot call it negative binomial. So when I talk about tossing a coin five times, right? When I'm talking about that, it shouldn't happen that if getting a head is my success, the probability of head in one trial is 0.5, then it's 0 0.8, then it's 0 0.1. It shouldn't happen. I should be tossing the same coin, which is unbiased. So the probability is 0.5. Or if I'm tossing the biased coin, the coin should still be same and should be biased in favor of one outcome. So if the probability of success will keep on changing, I cannot call it as following my negative binomial distribution. So I take probability of success equals to P over here in negative binomial. The experiment continues, like trials are performed number of times until a total of R successes have been observed where R is a specified positive integer. So in binomial, we don't say that we want this number of success till the point I'm going to perform it. But in negative binomial, this is the major point. Like when you have a look at the question of probability, how will you distinguish it from the binomial or negative binomial? How are you going to distinguish between them? The easiest trick is in negative binomial, it will always be given to you that how many successes do you want? Like, do you want eight successes? Only then you will stop the trial. Do you want two success? Only then you will stop the trial. So whenever the number of success are fixed that you want to get before the experiment, that is the place where negative binomial distribution will come into the system. When you are not fixing the number of success, and you're just fixing the number of trials, that is the place of binomial distribution, right? So over here, the success, the number of success is fixed, which is R. And R can take any value, which is going to be positive. 
So what do we have learned now is I want trials. Every trial will result in success or failure. Probability of success should be P. So probability of failure is 1 minus P. And then the last was that number of success will be fixed at R over here. So this is what we have learned for our negative binomial distribution. Now, what is the variable of interest? We have learned when do we categorize something as following negative binomial. But what is the random variable? Is the number of success my random variable? No, it cannot be because it is already fixed. How can it be random variable? Then what is the random variable here? The random variable which we take as x is nothing. It is the number of failures that you get before the rth success. So till the point you don't get your fixed number of successes, how many failures are you going to get? That is the variable x. So if I want that I am tossing a coin and I need two head, that is my success for me. So let's say before you get two head, you have got three failures. You get tail, you get head, you get tail, you get tail and you get head. So this thing. So this is your second number head, which is your success now, final complete success. But before that, this is your failure, this is your failure, failure. So three failures plus number of successes, how much? Two. So when I add number of failures and number of total success, I get my total number of trials in the negative binomial distribution. So this is how we get it. So x here will be representing the number of failures that will precede the rth success. Now after that, x is negative binomial random variable. So here x is the negative binomial random variable. One very important characteristic of this distribution which makes it different from binomial is the number of success is fixed here in negative which is equal to r whereas the number of trials are random which is in complete contrast to binomial. So number of success will be fixed but number of trials will be random which I will have to check that after how many failures. I'm getting the fixed number of success I have. So this is the random variable x which will follow negative binomial distribution. After this, let's take an example. A coin is tossed until eight heads are obtained. So I want to keep on tossing my coin till the point I get my eight heads. So I might get eight heads in eight trials. Maybe every trial I do, I get head always. I might get in 9 trials, I might get in 50 trials also. That completely depends upon the probability. So over here, what is my 8 is? R is my 8. N, which is the number of trials, I don't know that. They are going to be random. And when I want to find number of trials, so let's say X is going to be number of failures. So N is nothing, it is equal to X plus r. This is the value of n. So it is very easy. Now whenever we get any probability question, what is the formula which is going to help us to get the value of probability? Alright. So here whenever we have to find the probability of x, number of success is r and probability of each success is p. How do we find out that? A very simple formula. I told you x plus r is going to give you the total number of n. Now I am doing n minus 1 combination r minus 1. What is the reason here? Because when I say that getting two heads is my success. All right, have a look here. So when I say getting two heads is my success. So I know that the last trial the last trial will definitely be head. Because as soon as I will get my second head, I will stop my experiment. So the last trial, whatever its number is going to be, it doesn't have any choice. It has to be heads. Before that, I can have anything at any place. So if I leave this, 
like uh, let, let's say I'm getting two heads in five trials. So out of five trials, four trials, I don't know what I'm going to get. But the fifth trial, the fifth trial is fixed that I will be getting a head because I have to stop the experiment there. So it means the last trial, the nth trial is going to be fixed out of the remaining n minus 1 trial, I want to choose r minus 1 success. Because again, the rth success is going to be at last trial, which have no option. So I just want to choose the r minus 1 number of success from the n minus 1 number of trials. Because last success and last trial is going to be fixed over here. So that is how it, it is going to happen. Now, after this thing, so I have got x plus r minus 1 combination r minus 1. Because this is n minus 1 and r minus 1. Now, after this, probability of success raised to power r. Because how many times are you going to get success? You are going to get success r times. Now, probability of failure raised to power x. Because x is the number of total failures. So, how many times are you going to get the failure? You are going to get failures x number of times. So, using this formula, you can get the probability of x when x follows the negative binomial distribution. So, it's a very easy formula. You can solve a lot number of questions using this formula. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel. You can also download the app for understanding the other distributions. You can get access to those videos in the app only. So thank you for watching this video.